Foods do not cause inflammation. Your immune system's response to a food is the thing that causes inflammation. Previously in this series on inflammation, I've covered the one thing that causes all inflammation and that's your immune system. And I've been talking about things that trigger the immune system to generate that inflammation. Hi, I'm Dr. Steven Wangen, the founder and medical director of the IBS Treatment Center. This is a critical topic because inflammation is at the root of nearly all health problems. And if you haven't seen my previous episodes, then I highly recommend that you go back and give them a quick watch because they set the stage for what we're about to talk about here now, which is the most common trigger of your immune system's inflammatory response. In spite of all the possible triggers for inflammation, there is one thing that sets off the immune system more than any other and leads to most of the inflammation in humans in our modern era. And that means that this one thing that is at the root of most disease in the modern world is the most overlooked and underestimated issue about inflammation that I can think of. It is the food that you eat. I'm not talking about processed food or junk food or alcohol or sugar or food that most people would agree is unhealthy. Yes, that's, those can and do trigger inflammation. And I'm confident that people underestimate those too. But I'm talking about foods that you probably think are healthy for most people, including yourself, because that is what we were all taught. However, you aren't most people. You're one person. And this is key because different people have different immune systems and your immune system has a surprising amount of say regarding the food that you eat because 75% or so of your immune system is in your gut. It is literally the gatekeeper for how you respond to food. And if you hadn't noticed, your immune system isn't doing the same thing as the next person's. So what do I mean by that? So if your immune system did the same thing as the next person's, then for example, we'd all have exactly the same response to a virus, right? But by now, you know that isn't the case. Sometimes the immune system doesn't react at all. Sometimes it reacts the way you want it to, right? Sometimes it takes forever to react and sometimes it overreacts. And there are endless variations along this spectrum of how your immune system can react to something. But in order to dive deeper into this topic, I need to impress upon you one thing. And that's, that's this, foods do not cause inflammation. Your immune system's response to a food is the thing that causes inflammation. And this is a critical point. There are no universally pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory foods. Now you may have been told that, but it's not accurate. That's why, for example, some people have a problem with gluten and others don't. It's not the gluten, it's your immune system's response to the gluten that is the problem. Now the same is true, for example, if you have an anaphylactic reaction to something like peanuts, right? Some people have it and some people don't. Now there are foods to which many people have an immune response to and foods to which few people have an immune response to. Anti-inflammatory diets are based on those odds, right? They pick the ones that a lot of people or people often have a response to. But for those same foods that you may consider a good food or a bad food, there are other people who have the opposite response to those foods. So people are different. They really, truly, they actually are, especially their immune response to foods. That's what the Roman philosopher Lucretius meant when he said, what is food to one person may be poison to another. Any food could be an inflammatory trigger for you. And if you spend a lifetime eating a food that is triggering your immune system to create inflammation, then sooner or later, you're going to end up with a problem that you can't ignore. This is true even if you like the way it tastes, or you think you can't live without it, or you think it's super healthy for you, your immune system is the one that makes that decision. 
Now, inflammation is fine when it can do its job. So when it can take care of the problem and then the inflammation goes away. Now that's what usually happens when, for example, right when you have an infection, but your immune system can't kill off or remove something like a food that you continuously reintroduce into your body. You keep eating it and your immune system keeps generating inflammation. This becomes chronic inflammation that never goes away. Sooner or later, it's going to catch up with you. And when your immune system is chronically generating inflammation, then it's a lot more likely to go rogue and start causing other problems, like, for example, attacking you instead of attacking the problem. This is what we call an autoimmune disease. So this is exactly what happens in celiac disease, which is, by the way, the model for everything that we know about food reactions. And in my next video in this series, I'm going to talk about what we can learn from celiac disease that applies to all food reactions. And this, of course, is going to lead to a bunch of questions, right? Like, what symptoms and diseases can a food reaction cause? And how do we know if we're reacting to a food? Now, I'm going to address those in my next video. And if you like this video and you want to get notified when I do more like this, click the subscribe button below. And if you want to get personalized care for yourself, then visit my website, ibstreatmentcenter.com. I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.